Alright, what's up ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Mark 88, we got another guest here, you know what I'm saying, boy introduce yourself. What's up man, my name is Philip Stewart, 19 years old, street boy Louisiana man, here with my boy man. Yeah, we finna get it cracking, so I be on the gram, I see him doing the freestyles and everything, you know, I'm really fucking with it. So, yeah. a lot of artists don't really be doing that a lot, you know what I'm saying, like, not as consistent as how you doing, you know what I'm saying, I see you get uh, a lot of feedback from it. Yeah. So, question starting off with that, like, I saw T minus he liked you. He yeah. Liked, did he like it? He comment? He liked it. Okay. He liked it. Yeah. So, like, has anybody besides him reached out to you or liked it? Like some of your posts or something like that? I mean, I've had, like, local DJs be like, man, that's big. Like, um, some DJ I know, like, three feet, something like that. Mm -hmm. he, like, he was like, oh, uh, man, this is dope, man. Like, when you gonna start making your own songs, you know, you got bars put into a song. So I've been hit for by people like that, um, asking me, you know, what I'm gonna do a song. But a lot, I've been getting a lot of feedback from a lot of people. Just friends and family, uh, people I don't even know. Yeah. So yeah. How does that feel? Feel good. I mean, I told my homeboy, like, I had like 800 followers, like, in February. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm close to 1,200. So you jumped, so you jumped about, like, four. Yeah, so. Yeah. Man, that's a lot of people, bro. For sure, it really was. People try to downplay, like, 1,200 people is a lot of people following somebody. It is. I mean, you know, it ain't the Drake getting 50 yeah, million, yeah, you know what I'm saying? But just imagine putting in perspective, like, 1,200 people following you everywhere you go. Because pretty much we share everything on the gram, on social media. Yeah, most definitely. We still with that perspective. It's a lot, bro. Yeah. So, who who's somebody that you really look up to as far as musically? That could be their sound and their influence on you or just like the mores and principles that they go by? Somebody, well, I feel like I'll be cheating to answer if I just gave one person, mm -hmm. but I'll give two. Uh, I'll say Chris Brown and Drake. Um, first person I ever listened to or bought, bought a CD from mm -hmm. was Chris Brown. I mean, it's an influence, you know, on the, it's like just the, how he had the generation on lock, like his appeal to like, at even a, at a young age, you know what I'm saying? Not even the girls. Like it was just the yeah. dude was singing a song. That's how. That's how. That's how great he was. Yeah, and with Drake, I mean, just to see his progress from the skinny dude from the grassy mm. to like you know what I'm saying, making mixtapes, the grind, and then come out with the first mixtape and flop, then come back with comeback season, and to see the run that he had from 2009 to 2019, like those two people right there, mm. I, I, I'll get a title to. So, so why you think? Uh... Drake has been so successful through his career. Like, what makes him different? He's a chameleon. Yeah. Um, Drake can fit in any crowd. I mean, people people have, in this run as he's had where he's looked untouchable, people forget that when Drake came in the game, he was rapping his mm -hmm. tail off. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was rapping, like, out of his mind. But see, what happened was, then he started, you know what I'm saying? I mean, he always sung, but he started singing more. He got the ladies involved. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then he hit us with the pop Drake. Mm -hmm. The pop, the pop was that right there was set him to a whole different level. So, so when you say pop, Drake, what's one of the first songs coming to mind? One dance. One dance, okay. I was thinking more like find your love. You think you think that's pop? I think I think that's pop. I think it's definitely pop on the song that Kanye West produced. Uh, I never that song, but I think that one dance, that little that when he's on that little views era. Yeah, yeah. Like that, he was pop like controller. Yeah. You got one dance. I mean, I think it's another song with him and Rihanna. Hold on, we're going home. Yeah. And he got a song with him and Rihanna. I'm too good for you. Too good, yeah. Yes, he was on his little pop run. Yeah, he was, yeah. he was on, it was untouchable. You know for what sure. I'm saying? Then he had his little trap run. He's you know, what very saying? versatile. Exactly. So he's a, that's why I think that when it's all said, that man gonna crush everything in the record books. You think he's gonna be like the biggest name ever? The way it's looking right now. I don't know, uh, MJ, that's a, a tough one to pass. Even Jay-Z, Hov, you know what I'm saying? That's, man, what he's done. But you got to think we're in a different era now. Mm -hmm. Streaming, Instagram, yeah. like, it, maybe if Hov and them, MJ and them had Instagram at the time, they'll probably be, you know what I'm saying? They don't tell it. But Drake is the first superstar, him and Chris Brown, the first two superstars that's been, like, you know, in the social media era mm -hmm. where everybody's home to a high regard. So everything they do gets inflated. Easy. Exactly, so I think when it's all said and done, he has a chance to, mm -hmm. but we shall see. For sure. So, you don't got a tape out yet, right? Mm -hmm. So, what's a, for your tape, you don't got to leak no no names or nothing like that, but what's a, what's a sweet spot for, like, the amount of tracks 
that would go on an album or a mixtape, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's a, what's a good number of tracks? But you know, nowadays they be doing like 30 songs on a, on a mixtape. Like, like that's too much. Yeah, but they try to, it's a numbers game. And I think people, I, I think people so caught up in like, you know, the streaming numbers, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But for me, I would say for a mixtape, I'd say about maybe like, I'd say 10 through 12. I think that's a good sweet spot. And for an album, ooh, that's tough. Because see, you know, my pop, they grew up on the Get Rich Dot Tron. I mean, even that album had 19. Hov had like 17. Mm -hmm. But these dudes be having 25. So I'm going to say about 15 through fifteen through 17. That's a good deal. That's a decent yeah. amount. So right there. On that tape, what's that? The tape Breezy dropped. Uh, Harper the Full Moon. moon. How, many, how many songs on that one? Man. Like 40, maybe? 45, I think. That's too much for me. Yeah, and I'm a Breezy, like, Breezy fan. Yeah, that's and too much. I, I listened to the whole thing, too, and I was like, damn, if he would have cut half of this, yeah. man, that classic. I feel like, it, when, especially for local artists, people want to come up, they try to put too too much, yeah. too many interludes, all these little different skits and stuff like that. Like, bruh, nobody knows who you are. You know <laughs> exactly. So, like, me listening to, like, if I don't know you, you can be good, you know what I'm saying? But, like, if you come out with hella tracks, it's exhausting to listen to. You know what exactly. I'm saying? I mean, I wouldn't mind listening to like a Drake or a Cole because I fuck with them. You know what I'm saying? They established. Exactly. So, do you feel like as an upcoming artist, you should compromise that? You know what I'm saying? Instead of putting that many tracks out and maybe shorten it. That's a good question. Um, I think that. Like you said, with Drake and Cole and Kendrick or whoever else you want to name, they have built that fan base so mm -hmm. where they can do whatever they want. When you're trying to get started, you're playing the game of, I got to build my fan base. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to lose them before you get them. Right. So I think, you know what I'm saying, I think that's definitely what you said is correct. I mean, I think that you should cater to the people, you, try, you should cater to the artists you want, but mm -hmm. also you shouldn't flood, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Now, when you get to the level of them, you can do whatever you want because yeah. you got the millions of fans is gonna you know what I'm saying make your make your first week sales go crazy. But now but now you now you trying to but when you when you just get started you trying to get that out. first one hundred people, mm -hmm. two hundred, then build to a thousand, so on yeah. and so on and so on. You know it's like and also too it's very it's very it's very rare for somebody to get that, you know, that blue face effect to just mm -hmm. come out of nowhere. You like, man, what this do this dude is and then the whole world get it. Most times don't happen like that. So I feel like with blue face and like artists that just kind of seemingly just blow up overnight. I feel like those are just industry plans. You know what I'm saying? Like the industry is like, okay, we're going to put him right here because we know what's going to happen. They just get, they got him to do it off the street. All right, do this, boom, boom, boom. Because I feel like a lot of these artists, they're not really being themselves, you know what I'm saying? And you can kind of tell that, you can kind of see in Pete who's an industry plant and who's not. I've been hearing that a lot lately, about industry plants. Like just, and... I didn't know, honestly, I, I I thought people was just joking when they said that. That's a real thing. But it's a real thing. And, like, I've been watching, like, you know, probably heard Joe Budden, mm -hmm. his podcast, and just his, uh, he was on Everyday Struggle. Right. When he was saying about industry plans, there are people that were placed here because they knew what they would do. There's some names that he named that he said were industry plans that I was surprised. Yeah. And I was like, when I think about it, it's like, how did that person pop like that? Exactly. Because yeah. nothing really, if you, I feel like, in some cases, if you're not an industry plant, you still can just blow up overnight, you know what I'm saying, seemingly. But more times than none, they grind, you know what I'm saying? They have that 10-year grind. Nobody really sees what they're doing. And it just seems like they blew up overnight. But like Sean, you know, he was trying to get his, you know what I'm saying? He was trying to get Ye to put him on way back then, you know what I'm saying? Cole was doing it, hooping, you know what I'm saying, going, doing his thing in college, but nothing really is overnight, you feel me? Yeah. What the Jay-Z, you asked him, could he sign Jay-Z, he turned him down the first time. You so, see? like, do you think Cardi B was a, uh, an industry plant? To a, to a certain Pretty extent. Extent. Yeah, to a certain extent, because, like, people like Cardi B, like, I don't feel like they really care about the music. And that's why I, that's why the definition you gave, I was like, yeah, I think that's why I think she is because they put her in a position to where she's at because they knew that people would like that. Yes, yeah, yeah, she got the personality. She got a body for some for people to look at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm, whoever, they say they say she has a ghostwriter. You know what I'm saying? I don't know whether that's true or not, mm -hmm. but 
to talk on that topic of ghost right and I feel like you can pick up an artist off the street right mm -hmm. and somebody can ghost write for them but if you can't perform it right yeah ain't gonna pop so I feel like Cardi she does it really, really well so I don't want to take anything away from her what she does you know what I'm saying but I definitely feel like she is a industry player you know what I'm saying because then she started like a stripper yeah yeah so I feel like she, she definitely took that route but she making money she living her best life you for know sure. what I'm saying she putting food on the table for her family so hey we, we can't take you you know what I'm saying for sure so as for you it say like you getting kind of recognition from T minus, you know what I'm saying? Like, what, what if, what would you do if, like, he was like, all right, you know what I'm saying? I put you in position, you know what I'm saying? I just give you this little bread, boom, and make it seem like you were an industry plant. How would you, would you feel okay with that? I mean, well, for me personally, I really, I don't know if, I, nah, I wouldn't take it because, I mean, I'm compromising. Mm -hmm. And one thing I've seen that, in, this, in, the, in the music industry, that the people who stand on their morals, stand mm -hmm. on their self, those are the people who last long. The people take a quick buck, mm -hmm. those are the people who die out fast. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, I would definitely love the help of T Minus, sure. but to take, like, the quick money, like, yo, man, I'll put you right in this position, like, you know, boom, boom, industry plan, that right there, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't.